So this is what I personally think. Um, anybody in a place of authority should at least be consistent in the place of authority, if, if you understand what I mean. I Meaning, before you get to a place of authority, you have risen to the ranks, right? So you basically have an idea what the seat you're going to cover is about. You know all the bylaws, all the rules, all the regulations, you know all that it entails. At the same time, you give rooms for all the for unforeseeables, all the things that you might not know, all the things that you might not come across, all the things that you might not anticipate happening. So it means that your tolerance, your tolerance level in a place of authority should be higher than anybody else and underneath that particular authority. Meaning, in a place of authority, you have no excuse for the very things that you do that you are aware of. I mean, the un unforeseeables, nobody can blame you for that. But the very things that you are very much aware of should be things that shouldn't beat you under any circumstances. You should always be in a position where you can override the things that you are supposed to know anyway. So why am I saying this? If I'm equating um, this particular conversation to a place of authority, then I expect the creator of the authority to be better than the person occupying the place of authority. I.e., when we go to the New Testament and we talk about the centurion man, how Jesus met the centurion man and said, oh, this man is, a place, is at a place of authority. He knows what to do. He understand? He knows what to do. So everybody that comes to a place of authority, you should know what to do. I personally believe that if you are occupying a place of authority and you get to that position and then you are you are surprised by the challenges and the responsibilities of the place of authority, then I want to understand if you even are fit for that place that you found yourself in. So the creator of the place of authority Authority should even be way better than the occupant of the place of authority. In this sense, I'm talking about the creator. Oh, wait, I, I lie, I lie. Um, not talking about the creator, but I'm talking about the God of the Bible who is supposed to be the creator, supposedly. So if this God of the Bible is supposed to be the creator and is supposed to be the one that's initiating every single move and act and conduct on in this manifestation, this dimension, then this creator should not be in a position where this creator become inconsistent with the things that he does, or with his judgment, or with his conclusions, or, or with his temperament, or with his to tolerance levels. So if this supposedly creator is going against the very things that he stands for and He's no longer tolerant. He, he, he can no longer, um, how shall I even say, is surprised by the very things that he is creating. Then I want, it's like manufacturing a car and now all of a sudden you're surprised by the performance of the car. I'm like, the car is only subjected to the performances that you build it with. So this guy, you, you don't build a, a fast car and, and, and expect the fast car to be a, 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 a bus. Or you, you don't build a bus and expect the bus to be a fast track. It doesn't work like that. When you build a fast track, you're not thinking about load. You think about speed. Right? So the speed of the fast car shouldn't surprise you, the creator of the fast car. I hope you... So when... You go through the Bible and the God of the Bible is surprised about the things that are done in the Bible or the people that conduct themselves in the Bible. Then I'm like, wait a minute. Why are you surprised? Why are you supposed to know these things? You created these things. You created these beings. Why are you surprised by their conduct? Besides, when a manufacturer decides to pull the plug, 
What can a product say? So when we find this God of the Bible being the creator, going back and forth with the very things he is created, then I'm confused. I'm like, yo, what is going on here? Dude, you the creator. I am the creation. You shouldn't be surprised by what I do. I should be surprised that you are surprised about what I do. So that is just the inconsistencies that we find in the Bible that I think we should we should be able to address them. But of course, if you're caught up in the system, in, in the religious status quo, then you can never talk about it because you're blaspheming, right? But me, I can talk about it any day. That's what I, have, I really want to talk about. But, but next week is going to be exciting though because I'm going to talk about all the rubbish verses in the Bible. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to go in hard and talk about all the rubbish, all the... All the verses that I feel if the Bible is supposed to be a holy book, she didn't have made it. And some of the things that the Bible says the God, the creator of the world said in the Bible, some of the rubbish that wouldn't even come from your mouth, that comes from his mouth. Anyway, we, we'll go into that next week. But today, I just want to talk about the inconsistencies of this God. Can we go into it? One thing people have actually paid attention to how significant uh, the Bible is such a powerful tool that was used against our fathers, against our spirituality. It's a powerful tool to make an entire people think they are cursed. It's such a powerful book that makes you look at your parents as evil. If you are being governed by some bylaws and some constitutions, would you not want to know what is written inside this thing that is actually deterring everybody apart? This is why I do Living Christianity on Tuesdays because I, I want to go back to the same tool that they use. Listen, you got to know what is written in your Bible. You got to try and, and, and get into the minds of the writers of the Bible. I'm, I'm messing it up. Okay, let me see. Aquaba, Aquaba, Aquaba. That was a mess too. I mean, what's happening to my Aquaba? Aquaba, Aquaba, Aquaba. Welcome to the Menated Truth. My name is Koji Bento. I'm I'm honestly excited every time I get a chance to be here. And I want to say thank you. I think I checked on it and we have about 68 subscribers to our community page. And I want to say thank you for subscribing. We posted our first video and the community page is basically going to be everything in the community. Everything going on in the community. Everything happening. So community page is not for me. It's for you. It's for every single person in the community. So if you have something you are doing and you feel like you want to share on the community page, please let us know about it. So we can. It's your page as well. You can use it. You can run with it. But all that I'm saying is that let it be about the community. Whatever it is you're going to run with on the community page, let it be about the community. So the link is in the description. Please click on it, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's going, that is where all the testimonies are going to be. That is where all uh, the experiences, people who have come down, people who are here, people who are about to come, people, expectations, the land, the building, everything. Because we, we, we have to start building. We are building. You understand? So... All these projects is going to happen on the community page. This right here is just going to be the page of coming hard and going deeper and searching and traveling, asking the elders and, and, and the people around us about the truth. But the community page is for community stuff. So I'm excited about it. And please make sure you subscribe. Also, very soon I'm going to share with you all the social media platforms for the community. I'm talking about Twitter. I'm talking about um what are the social media platforms? Uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, the likes, right? And please subscribe to it. And I'm excited. I want to say a big thank you to the powers that be, uh, our creator, our father, and also our mother, the earth. We want to say thank you to the powers of the air dimension, powers of the earth dimension, powers of the water dimension, powers of the fire dimension. I want to say a big thank you to Amagana. I want to say a big thank you to the 77 Gold to Cape Coast. Nana, I want to say 
Wait, wait, what do I do? I want to say a big thank you to Nene, see, Nene, I just, Nene, I've been in, Nene, I've been in, Nene, I've been in, Nene, I've Yes, now I can move ahead and say thank you to Nene, I want to say thank you to Nene, Tabe, I want to say thank you to Nene, Fosu, I want to say a big thank you to Nene, Kwaboche. I want to say a big thank you to all the gods in the Aguna district. I want to say thank you to Nene, 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 I want to say thank you to um, Obo, Obo Kofi. I want to say thank you to Nana Kunedi. Nana Bna Kunedi. I want to say a big thank you to um, Nana Tubia and Yusu. I want to say a big thank you to Nana Fiji Of course, of course, of course. I want to say a big thank you to Nana Frama and all the gods that are constantly with us, serving, working constantly, tirelessly to ensure that you and I see to pass this amazing tax. That is being that is being given to us by the Creator. So it's exciting times ahead. It's exciting days ahead. I'm super excited for the many things that are about to happen in this community. I told you from last year. I told you right after sacrifice that we're gonna do a lot of things, a lot of big things, and see big moves on the way already. So I honestly can't wait to start seeing foundations being laid and things happening. Super excited, guys. I'm super excited. Wait. Without much ado, let me go into today's message. And um, of course, I'm talking about coming out of Christianity and there are a lot of our brothers and sisters who are stuck up in Christianity. And hey, my heart goes out to South Africa for holding it down. South Africa, what up? Yes, I'm excited for you guys to have your National Ancestral Day. It's, it's powerful. And I, I, I don't know how come we don't have footages, but I'm sure there should be big footage. Not the ones we are seeing, no. The ones we are seeing, because don't forget, this was sponsored by Amstel Motor. Amstel Motor is a big company. They're not just going to put money into anything that is not going to promote their brand as well. You know what I'm saying? So I know there should be bigger footages out there. I know, I know, I know, I know. Because South Africa has a huge numbers of those who are caught up in spirituality and all of that. So... Big ups to you guys for holding it down. I, I, I wonder where Jesus was. <laughs> I wonder where Jesus was when when everything was happening in South Africa. Listen, it's, it's time we move away from these lies, thinking some man from the sky is coming to save you. It's not going to happen. These lies have been told for centuries. And the funny thing is, and the sad thing is, we are not learning from them. Hence, why I'm here doing what I do. So I want to move straight to something said in Daniel 11.32. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. Mm. 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 That's heavy. That's heavy. It's in the Bible. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. Hmm. The New King James Version. The one of the fascinating thing about it. Let me let me see the old. This is this is amazing. <laughs> let me let me check something. Oh yes. Let me get let me get the old King James. This is New King James Version, by the way. Daniel 11, 20, 32. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. Where are you at, Daniel? Daniel 11, 32. Yeah, I still know. I still have my know my way around the Bible, very much. I'm a student of the Bible. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flattery. Maybe I'm being petty. Maybe nobody pay attention to exactly what this is about. But check the he. It's in small letters. Is this significant? Yes. Who is doing the talking here? Who is doing this? Is it not the God of the Bible? He shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The people that know their God. I, I can close here. I can, I can close. But the people that know their God. So the he was in small letters. Yeah, I'll be petty. It was in small letters. The he there. Small letters. 
So this is not signifying any divine. Come on. And don't tell me there's an oversight. They should tell you who is right in this. Guys. But anyway, that's not my focal point. Let me come back to my focal point. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. But people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. The New Living Translation, NLT, says, I used to love the NLT Bible. Yeah, I used to love it. He would flatter and win over those who have violated the covenant. Do you know what that means, flattery? It means that you'll be doing things, right? And in your mind space, you would think that you succeeded. Hence, the reason why some people feel they as themselves and spirituality has nothing to do. Because they feel what they are doing is what is, is succeeding. I'm fly, I'm doing this, and I'm here, and I'm over there, and I'm over that, and I'm over there. Flattery, they keep flattering themselves, right? That is a trap. Stop thinking your accumulate your accumulated success is who you are. That is flattery. That has nothing to do. That is a trick. Your accumulated success. What does it mean? It means these successes has nothing to do with who you are. Don't flatter yourself by it. Don't be fooled by it. Don't be fooled by the things that seem as though they are. Mm. But those who know their God shall be strong. Do you get why we are growing strong? Do you know why we are growing by the day? Do you know why this community is, is going to shock the world? Because we know our God. We know. Why is it necessary that you know your God? If you travel to a place and you have no idea where you're going, are you not supposed to depend on the GPS to pin you to exactly the location you need to get to? So the gods are like the GPS systems that help us get to the destinations that we are supposed to. You know the destination is in your head. That is when you come into discovering who you are, the IM program, right? So you know the destinations that you're supposed to get to because you know sort of you're coming into who you are. But you just don't know the way, the mappings, the, the route that will lead you there. So the gods have the duties and responsibilities to take you through the route. That would help you get to those destinations. And why would you be strengthened? Because once you know your God, you are not going to even entertain certain food. Mm. Oh. How are you going to be strong if you're eating all the weak food? It's only those who don't know their God that eat everything. But those who know they are God do not eat everything. They know what is life. They understand life. If you, there's no way on earth you would be in spirituality and not have life. That's why all the people are dying in the churches. Because they don't know life. They don't have life. Religion is dead. If the religion, the cycles that you find yourself in is dead, how are you ever going to be led to anything that is alive? Those who know their God will be strong. Do you see how deep this is? Because your God will take you to the places that you need to go. Your God will ensure that you have life, that you have it in abundance. That you're smart about it. You are enjoying life. You understand what life is. This is what your God will do for you. Because the God that served you, that is in partnership with you, 
It's alive. He cannot lead you into anything dead. Those who know their God will be strong and will do great exploits. Great exploits. It's time. Listen, I can end here. It's, I can end here. Anyone that does not know their God, you, you realize that those who know, you read it, this one, who know their God, those to the people who know, the people who know their God, this should tell you there's not one God on the face of the earth. No. Not one God on the face. The, but those who know their God, those who know their God, come on. I'm even just on the introduction. I'm, <laughs> you gotta know your God. You've got to. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 8, 19 to 20 says, It shall come to pass about if you ever forget the Lord your God and go after other gods and serve them and worship them. Why is this significant? Because the children of Israel, according to the Bible, this is their God. So they don't have to go after any other God. Who is your God? These people are sticking to their God. The other nations are sticking to their God. Who are you sticking to? Did your fathers have any God? Did your fathers know any God? And before any fool will come and tell you that God is a deep. Listen. Gods are created for you. The creator is not a God. Gods are created by the creator. They respond to the creator. They don't have authority over the creator. So the creator knows the exact location you find yourself and so therefore understands your need and know exactly what is meant for your being. So therefore the creator will not ensure that any God comes around you that will not be a benefit to you. That is why I said those who know their God. So if the children of Israel is saying that, that do not forget the Lord your God, I'm telling you the same thing. Do not forget the Lord your God. Don't. Right. And go after other gods and serve them and worship them. Don't do that. That's why when I see our brothers and sisters go to all these other countries to seek help, to seek healing, I'm like, what's wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Why are you busy chasing after the God of the Bible? That is not your God. Do you see the names of your ancestors there? And I know some Hebrew Israelites and all these people that are living in this fantasies will say, oh, that's the name of my ancestor. Where's the name of your ancestor? First of all, your ancestors do not speak English. Number one. There's no English name that represents your ancestor. There's no Latin name that represents your ancestor. There's no Greek name that represents you. There's no Jewish name that represents your ancestor. Yiddish, whatever. There's none of those names. Your ancestors have their names. They, they spoke a language, and the language they spoke, they have that name. Don't go after strange gods and serve them and worship them. I testify against you today that you will surely perish. Recently, I'm seeing in Ghana, everybody going around saying, oh, fix the nation, oh, fix the nation, oh, fix the nation, oh, fix the nation. What do you know about the nation? Did you not just read it? Those who turn their backs on their gods would perish. It's simple. What do you know about this nation? Fix the nation. What do you know 
No human being can fix Ghana. Let it be on record. No human being. Do you know why? Because so long as... Let me rephrase myself because I'm getting myself caught up in my, in my own... In, in the terminologies of what I'm saying. Okay. No intellectual person can fix this nation. This nation will not be fixed by intellectuality. No. Nimpedia and Nimpat that Seni. No bet to me, I'm done in mind. You know what I'm saying? On Nimpat that Seni. Not an intellectual being. No intellectual person can fix any nation. Because first of all, do you know the foundations of the nation? Do you know the foundations of your nation? Do you know the things? Ah, come on, go and search. Search about. Do you know the things that were done before this nation was built? Do you know where the name Ghana is coming from? The name Ghana is not an intellectual name. That's what I tell you. No intellectual person can fix this nation. If you want to fix the nation, anybody that go against your God will suffer. If you go against your God, you will suffer. You will perish. Straight up. And it's not just Ghana, across the face of the earth. Any persons that have ever turned you up, why do you get upset if these people do their rituals and their cult and all that they do? Why do you get upset? Why? Why do you get upset? They are connected to their God. In your courts, in your societies. Why don't you also connect to your God? What's holding you back? Oh, you're caught up in the system they made for you, the religious prisons. Like the nation that the Lord makes to perish before you, so you will perish because you will not listen to the voice of the Lord your God. So, here is where the inconsistency is coming. And I'll show you in a minute. The God of the Bible admits that he is a God. Right? Publicly that he is a God. But then again, he is saying, those who know they are God. So, if another nation knows they are God, should that nation perish? Are you get what I'm saying? This is the inconsistencies. If this nation, as a matter of fact, is on record, go to the scripture, every other nation that connected to their God succeeded. Every other nation. And that nation became the envy of the Israelites. We will come to that. Because everywhere the Israelite went, you go to, oh my word. This is so beautiful. These people are giant. These people are huge. These people are successful. These people are numerous. So God of Bible understand this principle like, if you go after your God, you will succeed. Hands down. Nothing is hindering that. God of Bible knows that. Right? Okay. Psalm 9, 17 says, The wicked will return to Sheol. Even all the nations who forget God. Which God? You just said in Daniel, those who know they are God. Mind you, the creator is not a God. The creator is not known by any human being. 
the gods that were created by the creator is not just one. So we do not have a God. It's not possible to have just a single God. How is that even going to be possible? The creator never created a single God. The creator is by himself. Creating is multiple dimensions. So therefore has never really revealed himself to any man. So no man have had any conversations with the creator. So all those that men have come into contact with are God. And this God is saying, don't they that know their God would be strong. So how do you then come and contradict yourself and say that all the nations will forget God? Which God? All the nations are not the nations of Israel. You have made the nation of Israel your nation. So therefore, why do the other nations perish if they go after their God? You get it. Okay, Job 8, 11 to 13. Can a papyrus grow without a marsh? You understand that, right? Can a papyrus grow without a marsh? What does it mean? Papyrus, they like flooding areas, swamp areas. So, therefore, when you see the papyrus, you see the swamp. What does it mean? A people cannot grow without its foundations, its root, its history, its background, its God, its secret, its potency, its power. Just as the papyrus cannot grow without the water, the muddy areas. Can a rashes grow without water? While it's still green and not cut down. Yes, it withers before any, yet it withers before any other plant. So are the part of those who forget their God. And the hope of the godless would perish. The hope of the godless would perish. The hope of the godful would flourish. What does it mean to be godlessness? Meaning you don't have any god. Assisting you. Come on. You see the inconsistencies. So. When we talk about the godless people. We are literally talking about those. Who are not connected to any god. God. If the papyrus. Remains in the swamp. It's going to grow. When you take the swamp away from the papyrus, it dies. Fortune or Fortuna, equivalent to the Greek goddess Tyka, is the goddess of fortune. And the personification of luck in the Roman religion remained popular through the Middle Ages until, until at least the Renaissance. 
The blindfolded depiction of her is still an important figure in many aspects of today's Italian culture. Where the dichotomy of fortuna, lack or unlack, plays a prominent role in everyday social life, also represented by the very common refrain, la, la dia, Forch, fortuna e sisca, I'm speaking Latin now, goes on and on. Fortune is often depicted with a uh, gubernaculum, with a gubernaculum, ship's rudder, a bow or rotor fortune, a wheel of fortune, first mentioned by Cicero and Conocipia, Conocipia, forgive me about these names, these are not my languages. I'm trying, I'm doing my best. <laughs> this is not my language. Horn of plenty. She might bring good luck or bad luck. She could be represented as veiled and blind, as in modern depiction of Lady Justice, except that fortune does not hold a balance. Fortuna come to represent lives um, capricious, capriciousness. She was also a goddess of fate. Do you understand this? It says, what? But you who forsake the law, the Lord here is literally bow. There's no difference between bow and the law. You see why I'm talking about the inconsistencies of the God of the Bible? There's no difference. Check. The original name of the Lord is Baal. Or his people say Baal. Or whatever. It's the same thing. Do the research yourself. Okay? Don't take my word for it. Do the research yourself. So those who forsake Baal, this is what they should say. Or the Lord. And you know when they say Elohim is L is one. Elohim, plural. God. Who set the table? Who forget my holy mountain? So the mountain of Baal, the mountain of this God, you forget the mountain of this particular God, right? And you set a table for this other God, fortune. But you've been reading this all these years and you think that you are just reading English words? No. For your information, you are reading different gods. That is why I tell you there's not a single thing called one God. So when they say those who forget their God, they are not talking about a God, but they are talking about the God that holds you, the heart, the God that sustains you, the God that sustains that particular people. That is why I'm saying Ghana cannot be fixed unless the people of this nation go back and connect themselves to the God that holds the name Ghana. Don't let me drop some stuff. You think Christianity can fix Ghana or Islam or religion? No. So he says, you forget the, the Lord, the God that brought you here. You set a table and you go for fortune. Who is a God? Or you fill your cup, mix with wine for destiny. Which is another God? Guys. You see, Andy. You see, Andy. Let's learn. Okay? Let's learn. It's so significant. Let's read the God Destiny. I have all these gods here. It's the first principle of power that is supposed to predetermine events. The, today, people look to uh, all these gods to tell them signs of their future. That is why things like the zodiac, don't get me wrong. When I say the zodiac, I'm not necessarily talking about the elemental beings, okay? 
But people who don't understand what the elemental beings are and are only going for shortcut, you are lost. I haven't, I haven't, I'll take, these are all things that I used to talk about in the past. You understand? Fate, destiny, fortune, these are all gods. And it says what? You turn your back on one god and you go after these other gods. And who fill cups mixed with wine for destiny? You should understand. The, the god of the Bible. Let me show you something. I pray I find this. Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't want to do this. Hold on. Give me time, okay? Let me teach you. Yes, I found it. Now watch this. Now, the God of the Bible is complaining because people are serving what? People are serving mixed wine for destiny. And setting up altars for fortune. I will destine you to the sword. I will destroy you. For what? Setting up an altar for. For fortune. And also. Mixing wine. For destiny. So this should say that. When you mix wine. It should, not, it should be abolished. That, that, that should be a demonic thing. Right? That should be something that is not done because I'm setting you up for the sword. And I'm messing you up. Okay? Now, see, and all who, who, who bow down to the slaughter because I called you but you did not listen. I spoke but you did not hear and you did evil in my sight and chose that in which I do not delight. So, you, and you see, you, it talks about you left me and you went after vain. Vain is also a god and you, you went after vanity and you became vain. So vanity is also another god. Yes, these are all God. All these words that you find on your tongue, they are all names of God. That exists. Everything that exists has a name. The only thing that has not has a name is, is that which goes beyond existence. That is why today the creator has no specific name. What name? Every tribe, every ancestry has a name they call the creator. And even our fathers, you know, like Oduma and Kuba, it's not necessarily it's a title a unique title given to the creator and when you mention it you know you're not talking about a god you talk about the creator now my problem is if this god is upset because they are mixing wine for destiny according to Isaiah according to Isaiah 65 my question is why the heck for a cup is in the hand of the Lord, and the wine forms. It is well mixed. He pours out of this, surely, all the wicked of the earth must drain and drink down. Do you understand what I'm This is a libation. So the God of the Bible pours a libation mixed with wine and spices. And the wine forms. So he's talking about palm wine. Because the normal wine you drink don't form. The only wine that forms is palm wine. So he has palm wine and he has mixed them up. And once you mix the drinks up and you invoke a prayer and pour it. 
nobody can stand up prayer. Nobody can stand up prayer. But this is what this God is doing. Hmm? There's nothing wrong with him doing it. Because he really, the only how he can pray this, read this Psalm 75. Hey. He makes it up and pour it against the weak, against those who are against him. So he's coming after his enemies. He combines all these powers, mix them in a cup, and pour it. Because every drink has a power behind it. I'm saying it too much. Every single drink you pour has a power behind it. All the drinks, they all have their unique power behind it. The palm wine has a serious power behind it. That's why whenever you go to any palm wine that's still in place, there are so many gods around. So when you pour all these different, you've, you've invoked different gods and mixed them up. And when you speak over that, you send that on the assignment. It's too powerful. You die. If somebody should invoke that against you. You get, you get the inconsistencies. So this God is upset that they are doing it unto one God. But when it's done to him, he's okay. Psalm 78, 40 to 40. How often they rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Grieved you? Anyway. And again and again they tempted God and pained the Holy One of Israel. And they did not remember his power. The day that he redeemed them from adversary, when he performed his signs in Egypt and his servant, and he marvels in the field of Zion. It goes on. Psalm 106, 19. They made a calf of Herod and, and worshipped the calf. So he is totally upset that they are doing all this to all the, the other gods. Right? Uh, Isaiah 1, 2, 3. Oh, listen, oh heavens, and hear, O oh, earths, for the Lord speaks. Sons have read, sons have read and brought up but they have revolted against me. An ox knows its owner, and a donkey its master, it master's manger. But Israel does not know. My people do not understand. It's not God of the Bible. Don't worry. It's not only your people that do not understand. My people don't understand either. So you complain about your people. Listen, my people don't understand because out of your people. Created the Roman Empire. Out of that, created Christianity. And the Christianity that came from you is messing with my people. So you made a mess, God of the Bible. And now this mess you made that you didn't clean up is affecting my people. So you, you're right. Your people don't understand. But my people certainly don't understand as well. Jeremiah 3, 19 to 21. Then I said, how would I set you among my sons and give you a pleasant land, the beautiful inheritance of the nation? This is where I'm like, stop. This is robbery. Come on. This is bullying. You are going after inheritance of other nations? But yet, when a nation come against you, you say the nation is committing evil against you. But when you go against other nations and other gods, you don't commit evil against them. You see the inconsistencies of the Bible? The most beautiful inheritance of the nation. That's what I told you. The God of Israel never was never able to do anything beautiful for his people, but always went after the beautiful things other gods have made for other nations. You wonder why the people, the children of Israel, kept going after these other gods. Because even their God was constantly going after their things. So, why wouldn't they go? If their God is not content with what he has, why would his people be content with what he's giving them? Do you get the analogy? If I'm a father, and I'm not content with what I have, and I'm always comparing myself to the other families, what do you think my children would do? Do you think my children would ever be content with what they have? It starts from the head. If the head is sick, 
The whole body is sick. The reason why the children of Israel kept going all over the place is because the God of Israel was all over the place looking into everybody's business but his own business. He was never comfortable in his own house. So he was constantly roaming. Booty calls. God, constantly booty calls. Going through nations. And na if you didn't go to the other nation, how did you know they have beautiful things? If the head is sick, the whole body is sick. You wonder why they went after all the, all the other girls and now you're complaining. Who are you, com you complaining to me? And I said, you shall call me my father. You shall call me my father. And not turn away from following me. Surely, as a, wo as, as a woman treacherously depart from her lover, you shall... you. So you have dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, declares the Lord. A voice is heard on the bare height. The weeping and supplication of the sons of Israel because they have perverted their ways and they have forgotten their God. Just like my people have forgotten their God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget none of his benefits. There's a, there's a place that I wanted to read. Just give me one second. Because of time, time is fast spent. I'm, I don't. I don't um, let me see. So he says here what? And God said, this is a sign of covenant which I'm making between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all successive generations, I set my bow in the cloud, that's the rainbow, and, and shall be for a sign of covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come about when I bring cloud over the earth and the bow will be seen in the cloud. And I'll remember my covenant between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and never again shall the water become a flood to destroy all flesh what a lie God of Israel what a lie this you you see if you the God fail to remember the covenant you have made why would the people remember because you made a covenant that flood would never come on the face of the earth again. Right? Destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the cloud, then I will look upon it and remember the everlasting covenant. Ever you said everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And every living creature, that is a big statement. And an everlasting, you made an everlasting covenant that there's never going to be storms. There's never going to be flood. How many floods have we heard happen in our lifetime? So how can you a God make an everlasting covenant and yet break the covenant? What kind of God are you? A God that have dimension. You make a covenant today and you forget tomorrow. You don't even remember the everlasting. Something that is everlasting is supposed to be everlasting. We've had floods and tsunamis all over the place. Oh, you didn't do it. Oh, another God did it. Oh, there are other gods that care less about what everlasting covenant you are making with the children of Israel. Oh, because don't tell me this covenant was only about the children of Israel because you said all flesh. I put it to you, God of Israel. You said all flesh. At this time, you're not even God of Israel. So why am I even talking about it? But at this time, you're only talking to Noah. And Noah was not an Israelite. So therefore, this God is not the God of Israel. So whoever this God is, Whoever this God is, please. When we say, in case you don't understand English, when we say everlasting covenant, it means something that is everlasting. In case you did everlast is lasting forever. So if you are making a covenant that you're never gonna allow flood to come upon all flesh on the face of the earth. When I see a flood, am I supposed to take you serious? Come on, guys. 
This is a sign of a covenant which I have established between me and all flesh on the face of the earth. All flesh means all. It, it, it seems like he, he doesn't understand the word all. I mean, obviously, this wasn't written in English, so definitely he wouldn't understand the word all. But in case you didn't know, your, your words, so your supposedly words that you gave to Noah has been translated into English. And two things have been said, everlasting and all. Everlasting covenant and all flesh, meaning there's not a single flesh on the face of this earth that should suffer flood. But yet, what, we, what do we see? Flood all over the place. He made another covenant with Abraham to foreskin, cut off the foreskin and all of that. You see, there's so many things. <laughs> let, let me read the last one. Time is up, time is up, time is up, time is up. Let me read the last one. The inconsistencies are horrible. At least you should make your mind. There's another one that I saw I wanted to read. I mean, today I'm wrapping up with the gods of the Bible. Sorry. And I feel I have to read it to see it. But at the same time, I feel I don't have the time to read it all. So I don't want to read it. Okay, let me read it. When you become the father of children and children's children and have remained long in the land and acted corruptly and make an idol in the form of anything and do that which is evil in the sight of the Lord your God, so as to provoke him to anger. I call heaven and earth to witness you. You see, why is the God of supposed to be the creator calling on heaven and earth to witness anything? Whenever you are calling witnesses, and regardless of who you are, you need somebody of high stature, high magnitude, somebody who's trustworthy, right? So it means that he only trusts the heavens and the earth, the God of Israel. You not get it. Okay, you get it. You get it. You get it. You get what I'm saying, right? I call on heaven and earth to witness against you today. So the God of Israel is calling witnesses in the case that he has with the children of Israel. I shake my head. I shake my head. That you surely perish quickly from the land where you are going over Jordan to possess it. You shall not live long on it, but will, uh, will be utterly destroyed. The Lord will scatter you among the people and you will be left few in number among nations where God drives you. There you will serve God in the works of men, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear. So these gods do not see nor hear nor smell, but from there you will seek the Lord your God. And you will, first and foremost, this is BS, right? Because the Ark of Covenant was made out of wood. The Ark of Covenant does not see nor hear, but yet the Ark of Covenant had power. The point I'm trying to make is that whenever anybody makes an image, they are not necessarily worshipping the image. The God is not in that image. The God uses that image. The image is just like a mobile for communication tool. They use the image to access. I'm not saying I don't believe in creating images, but creating images as to pour libations to the images. I don't believe in that. But if those, if you create that, that is not the God. The God, they use that as a, just as the children of Israel use the Ark of Covenant to, to represent the presence of the God of the Bible. Do you understand? So why didn't he call the Ark of Covenant something that do not hear or see? Because these are wooden structures. The double standards. You know? But from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him and search out anyway I just wanted to bring you this that there are so many inconsistencies but I just wanted to stay on the inconsistencies of the God the fact that the same thing because it it talks that there are so many places I skipped it talks about all these sacrifices you give to this God but the God of Israel demands sacrifices Check it. The man said, it talks about all these nations killing their children, but the God of Israel is killing his people all the time, cracking the place up, letting the earth swallow the people of it all over the place. 
So what moral right or grounds do you have to judge another God for killing if you are too busy killing? As a matter of fact, these other gods don't kill as much as the God of Israel did kill. The, the, the inconsistencies of the God of the Bible makes you wonder if the God of the Bible is okay. With all due respect. No, I want to know. Or is, if, if, if probably is the writers of the Bible, then please, God of the Bible, come and defend yourself because the writers did a horrible job of making you a very inconsistent and imbalanced God who have no idea. So please, you need to speak for yourself, God of the Bible. You need to justify yourself. God, the writers of the Bible have made you useless. And it says that you are very inconsistent in your thought process. Because the very thing you say here that they should not do would be the very thing you demand for yourself. So I'm confused. It's either I'm doing it or I'm not doing it. But if I can only do it but for you, what is going on here? And then my time is far spent. Listen, let me run out. Let me get up. Learn for yourself. Any God that is not consistent or the representative of the God that is not consistent, there's something definitely wrong here. The summary of what I have to say about forgetting the God of, the God of your fathers is they that know their God shall be strong. I know my God. Not a God. I know my God. And we live to see whether I'm going to be strong and do exploits or whether I'm going to be weak and perish. We'll find us soon. Stay blessed. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Don't forget our yeah, community YouTube page. Please go on there. We have a first video. Second video will come up. A lot of videos will come. Go in there. Love it. And know. Now because we know our God. We're going to grow strong. We're going to do exploits. Have a great evening, guys. I love you. Mwah!